Good morning, everybody. Bourbon Country Mom here. It is day two at Epcot. We're gonna go hit up food and wine again today. We have two seminars, a culinary demonstration, as well as another um, beverage seminar where we're gonna be tasting wines from Germany later this afternoon. Uh, we're gonna go see if we might be able to hit Soren right now. I don't know, just because our culinary demonstration is at 12.15 and we don't wanna be running too late to get over there. Um, it's super packed today, uh, so we'll see what all we get into. We may just be focusing mainly on the food booths um, and things and trying everything out today. So uh, check in with you guys in a little bit. We're gonna try it. We're gonna go in, we're gonna ride Soren, and as soon as we get off, we're gonna have to book it over to the Festival Center, which is where the culinary demonstration is. And Pavilion, you can see straight across is the Garden Grill that is a rotating restaurant that rotates within the Living With The Land ride. Um, it also is a character uh, meet and greet. It has Farmer Mickey, Farmer Pluto, as well as Chip and Bottom Level. You also have Seasons, which is a food court, so quick service type meals if you're on the dining plan. Down to the left is the Living With The Land ride. And then back over to the right is where Soren is at, as well as to give you first soaring we're in the fast pass lane up here down here is where the standby is they've got some screens on the walls that just have challenges and things to keep you busy while you're waiting in the 50 minute wait that it currently has all right so we are waiting in line we were able to get row one so we'll get to be the very top which is in my personal opinion the best place to ride on soren only because three is the very bottom and two you're in the middle so you've got people's feet hanging in your face and i get easily distracted so row number one it is right, so we made it it is 11:57. here's the festival center back here we were able to get on Soren, and we're over here 15 minutes before the start time of our culinary demonstration of scallops. It's with the chef from the Brown Derby, which is located in Hollywood Studios. All right, so we are currently seated at our table here for the culinary demonstration. It is when you first walk into the festival center, it's literally straight back through, so you just, either way, you can go around left or right, and it's in the dead center of the back. Um, so I'm gonna flip you guys around so that you can see like the layout of the area that we're in right now. So they have tables. Uh, we're, not, we're, we're like three five minutes away from the landing. Right here we're so we're like, oh, okay, so south. Okay. Close to okay. Rowan. Yeah, okay. Very nice. Very 19 miles from the They do also the provide to you the recipe. Oh, okay, yeah, we used to live in um, the um, chef that which is yeah. actually which is right here. Yeah, we're like today. five minutes from Philly. Yeah. So yeah, and they have a couple different recipes here on the front and the back for you to try at home. But, you know, uh, we don't see that much of the fall, but what we do, um, it's all about the seasonality, the flavors, you know, everything that's going on, you know, especially with food and wine, it's also yes. one of my favorite seasons as well. Mine so, yeah. too, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I have people, that, the oil's starting to dance a bit, if you will, on the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. So take out my scallops, mm -hmm. season them with some salt and pepper. Of course, if you guys want to do more seasoning or no seasoning at all, you can absolutely do that. And you season them right before you get ready to put them into the pan. Right. Mm -hmm. Just make sure it's all over. How are you enjoying the dish? Delicious? I don't, no, I don't know. I don't have it well? yet. No yelling needed? Okay. <laughs> That's good because um, I think there were... Um, well over a hundred scallops cooked, so you also can't crowd the pan, right? Yeah. No. Um, which is another thing we tend to do. Here is All right, finished sorry, product. So this is actually everything that she is making and preparing. Um, so we've got the Brussels sprouts, the sweet potato puree, you can see the pomegranate seeds here, so the jelly's right there, and then the scallop. You got it all done. Another question while she's getting the plate and ready to plate. Okay, pretty happy. Someone's wanting seconds. Is that what I saw? Yes. <laughs> without a doubt. Without a doubt. So, do you all tend to do a seasonal menu change at Brown Derby? Or are you entering into a fall menu? So, the beautiful thing about working at a signature restaurant like Brown Derby is that we can change the menu item whenever. Sometimes we change something every two weeks. Uh, you know. Like this upcoming week, we're changing about three different items. One of the items just changed about three weeks ago. Wow. The other item, it changed like a month ago. So, I mean, it's all about just playing around. 
what are the guests want, what's the new trend, what's going on, you know, how to play with different flavors. There's so many different things that you can do. Um, so yeah, we change the is available and, and then right. slice them, right? Like what can we get, you know, basically what's going on. And for what farm, we definitely like using our local uh, farms as well here in Florida. Since Florida, really, it's kind of like summer all year long. There's a lot of things that you can definitely get all year round. Um, but definitely tends to let a ribbon stay in it. Okay, so overall, the culinary demonstration was really cool. You can see the kitchen behind me. This is where Chef Rosa from the Brown Derby, which is a signature restaurant, um, went through cooking everything that was actually on um, the sheet that was provided to us with the recipes. Um, our plate, like you saw, did have everything that she cooked. Um, it was really good. I'd never had a scallop before. I didn't mind. It had great flavor. Um, I probably wouldn't order it when we're out. I do like seafood, but I would not purchase this when I would go out to a restaurant. Um, but it was really good, so if you enjoy scallops, make sure you're, if you're able to hit up a demonstration that you do so. Um, this one was $17 per person, so it's fairly reasonably priced. Um, and they have them throughout the entire festival, so make sure you guys get here and check so them out. We are currently over in like their wine store where you can get some samples, um, pick up you know, like merchandise and things like that. One little tidbit of information, even though they do sell these full bottles of wine, champagne, anything, you cannot open them on property. So you can't, like at a winery where you go and you purchase a bottle of wine, you sit around and drink it, you cannot do that here. You have to purchase it and take it with you and you are not allowed to open it at all while you're on property. So just an FYI for anybody who is potentially thinking about doing that when they come. All right, so we are currently in the Legacy Showplace, which is where they have the craft beers. You can get different flights. You can get just single beers if you want to. Um, today um, it's very crowded. It is Sunday, the weekend of Labor Day, so kind of expected it. But um, we're gonna order, and I'll show you guys. All right. So Mark and I did the two flights that are available. It's the Western Florida and the Eastern Florida. Um, so I'm gonna flip you guys around so you can see the two flights that we got and the beers that come within each of them. So each of the flights cost $9. Um, this is the J-Dubs, which we tried at the beer festival, which you saw in yesterday's video. This is the, I'm not even going to try to pronounce, the Central 8 Farmhouse Ale and the Cigar City Pale Ale here. Joe also got the same flight there. This is. And then I got the Eastern Florida, which I actually tried this one yesterday. It was pretty good. This is the MIA Beer Company Golden Ale, the Blonde Ale, as well as the Triple Chocolate Milk Stout. Um, again, these were both $9 for a total of 18 Okay, so as you guys know, I'm normally not a light beer drinker. I did try the MIA Golden Ale. It's okay. I don't, I don't particularly care for it. I'm looking forward to drinking the stout. Riesling to the United States. 
Why is that? Line uh, number one, and I apologize if I pronounce it wrong, is Savion Vermont. All of these, as she said in her seminar, is going to be dry wines from Germany. That's a Maori word, so you didn't know that. She's a little Maori today. So Kaitui is Taylor in Schneider, his name in Maori. So now we're on to Pinot Noir. So one of the things, for those of you who've been in Germany, you've already noticed, it actually says Pinot Noir. It doesn't say Spaperganger. So, okay, so our number that was, uh, two wine glass that we still so have for you guys now, is Pinot Noir. It's been a trend that's happened in the last 10, 15 years. You had to go to Germany to get some Pinot Noir, Noir. Noir. from Germany. Like I said, there are, there are rules. You just can't go in your vineyard and go, hey, I'm going to try this. So it was as in the middle 90s when they started showing you know, the temperatures of, of the annual uh, record of temperatures showing that it was going up. Uh, some vineyards, especially in the Falls and the Rhine Hesse, and the two big regions next to each other, they're the warmest region. Some huh. of their winemakers went to the government and said, you know, I think <laughs> I think we should do some little experimental Cabernet and Merlot planting, and Syrah also, and they did, and it turned out really well. So actually, that's why it's new. You still won't see bunches of it coming from Germany. I don't think we're going to be the next Bordeaux. Uh, like we were with Pinot Noir, we are now world class. Um, but it's really, it's really good uh, uh, when you can find some Cabernet and Merlot there from Germany. We don't export a lot and it is a little bit expensive because there's not much growth. But showing you that we can do a really good Cabernet and Merlot. And now you have had one from Germany. So this is Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon blend, the Black Prince. And then uh, what he does is to get into that deeper, deeper color that most people are used to uh, for when you have Cabernet and Merlot. He has a little bit of a third grade called Cabernet Dorsa. So it's new, you've never this heard of it. Uh, it's only Cabernet been around for about uh, 10, 12, 13 years, I think. All right, everybody, we have just finished up our um, Wines of Germany tasting, the beverage seminar here at the Festival Center. And I'm sorry, I just said festival like two or three times. Um, I have to be honest with you guys. This is our first time here at the wine festival. And I'm not sure if we were 100% prepared. Um, I didn't realize that this was the opening weekend. And it was very hot. Um, which it always is, you know, here in Florida. It's very hot. It's humid. Um, but we decided to go to Mexico and get... Um, two margaritas a piece bad idea um, just because of the weather and it being so hot um, having two margaritas at one time even though it was worth the price to do it not the best idea um, when you buy the samples that they provide at the different kiosks they are a lot smaller that way you're able I feel like to pace yourself a little bit better um, whereas if you go to the pavilions and buy what you can normally get, like even when the wine festival isn't here, um, it definitely takes its toll on you. Uh, so I would definitely say if you're going to come to the wine festival, make sure that you go to the kiosks, get the um, samples that they provide. They are a little bit on the pricier side, but you're at least getting a smaller sample so that you can enjoy a little bit more. Um, because we got the passion fruit and the blood orange margaritas, they were very filling and actually gave um, some slight indigestion where it was like very uncomfortable to try to breathe um, and like keep moving, especially in the heat that you experience while you're here. Um, so just a little, you know, just a tip from someone who is just doing the wine festival for the very first time, because I know there are plenty of videos out there of people who have done this, you know, over and over again, and they kind of know what to expect. Since this is our first time, we we definitely weren't prepared for it. Um, it it's very it, it's fun, and there is a lot of things to see, and there are a lot of additional kiosks here that are outside of the normal countries that are here, so it's really cool. Um, but just make sure that you. You know, pace yourself, prepare for the heat, drink a lot of water, eat well. But back to the wines of Germany. It was really cool. The lady had a lot of energy. Um, because I was kind of like feeling the heat and feeling the indigestion, I didn't hear everything that she was speaking on. I did get a couple good clips for you guys about what she was talking about. Um, Germany, I think, was normally known for their sweeter wines. However, the 
beverage seminar that we did do was all of their dry wines. There were three dry wines. It was white, one white, two red. They were good. And I think I would have enjoyed them more had we not have come out of the heat. And this beverage seminar was only $17 per person, so it is reasonably priced. They are non-refundable, and there was not an annual pass discount um, available for this, but it was good. The lady was great. She was very informative. Um, so definitely make sure that if you are coming out to the wine, um, the food and wine festival, that you try to check out some of the seminars because they are really cool, really informative. Um, I definitely liked the one earlier um, with Rosa, Chef Rosa from the Brown Derby, being able to kind of just get a glimpse into almost like the kitchen of the restaurants that you check out while you're here is really cool. Um, so I'm not really sure where we're gonna go from here. I think we might go check out some more at the World Showcase. We'll probably pass up our Fast Passes at um, Living With The Land and Spaceship Earth, um, just because it is really hot. We'll go check out some more outside and then we're probably gonna head back to the hotel. So we'll check in with you guys later. All right guys, so we stopped at the Almond Orchard, which is hosted by Almond Breeze. We got the banana almond sundae or a smoothie type thing. It's not a smoothie whatsoever, but um, but it's got the banana type ice cream with, it looks like some type of berry, um, like fruit syrup inside of it and some chocolate oats inside of it. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but it smells really good. It's not that great. No. Um, the banana like ice cream part of it is okay, but I don't know. I I wouldn't recommend it. All right. So this is the Irish cheese dip and uh, warm pudding. And warm chocolate warm pudding. Warm chocolate pudding. pudding right here. So we'll see how this is. All right, hey everybody, just wanted to check in with you guys. We are currently at the Italy Pavilion. I went ahead and got some of the peach sparkling wine that they have here. Um, it is roughly about $10 a glass. I did run into Kim, who is super awesome. She did actually get me um, like a taste of the lemon cello, and um, it was really good. Um, the, right off the bat, it was very tart but the lemon flavor afterwards was really good. Um, so if you're in Epcot, make sure that you guys hit up the uh, Italy Pavilion. And um, Kim, thank you so much for that limoncello shot and thank you so much for following me. I hope you guys have a great trip. everybody so the day went really great um, had a lot of fun um, just experiencing the food and wine festival for the first time so we're back at the hotel just relaxing listening to some weird noises outside here in Florida um, but I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us while we're here um, I got plenty more stuff coming for you this week um, so I look forward to sharing it all with you guys and I hope you're enjoying it so if you are again please make sure that you like share comment subscribe let me know you're here um, what you love about the food and wine festival from past years or if you've been here since um, it started this year uh, so I will see y'all tomorrow have a great night cheers <laughs>